Well, g'day and welcome to the channel. Today's video, I've got the RF 800 F11 on the Canon R7. I'm in the Winton wetlands and I'm gonna photograph lots of birds today. So what I'm really keen to try out today is just how important is this effective focal length? Like 1280 millimeters is a lot. And it's gonna be great here because there's actually some brown falcons and nanking kestrels and birds of prey that just sit in these trees, but they don't let you get very close. So this sort of effective focal length will hopefully allow us to get the bird quite big in the frame. So I'm excited to try that. So why don't we just drive around, see what we can find and photograph some birds. So that's the idea, let's get to it. So I've just spotted a silver crest of cockatoo checking out some hollows in this big dead tree. So I'm just gonna take some shots and just move closer and closer. So that's how I do it. I sort of start from a distance, get some insurance shots, and then just walk a little bit closer um, as we go. So I'm currently in mechanical mode, 15 frames per second, using dual back button focus. And we'll just focus on, there it is. Oh, that's nice. It's just kept putting its head out this hollow, which makes for quite a nice shot. Okay, so I've got those, let's move a little bit forward. All right, so a little bit closer now. There we go, so we'll take some shots. All right, very good. Alrighty, so that was a good start. We just had that bird up in the tree, uh, got some shots. Hopefully it turns out all right. This is all I'm gonna to do today is just drive around, seeing what I can see and just making the most of the opportunities when I see them. So on to the next thing. All right, so the whistling kite's up in the tree, but it's a long way off. Yeah, it's a little bit too far. Oh, it's taken off. So we've got a uh, brown falcon in a tree over here. I don't know how far it is, maybe 40 metres, something like that, 50 metres. We'll just see if we can't get a little bit closer. There we go, at least he's looking at us. It flew off, that's always the tricky part. You just don't know how close should I get. That's always the issue that you're dealing with. And with all this uh, extra reach, I still got a shot, I think, which is okay. Um, it's not as close as I would have liked, but I think it's still gonna turn out okay. Oh, I've just spotted the flame robin. I've just seen him. I'll see if you can spot him in the, you see that orange breast all the way over there? That's what we've been looking for. Okay, so I just spotted the flame robin as I was walking back to the truck. He's over here, so let's go for a walk and see if we can't track him down and then stalk him. He must be feeding on the ground here somewhere, so I'll just tentatively go towards him. Okay, we've got a bird here. I um, haven't quite got the sun. Oh. 
Oh, that's good. All right, so we've got some birds moving and feeding as we go. So I've noticed that these flame robins are perching on this uh, on these stumps. So I just want to give them a really obvious place to land. So something that sticks up above everything else. So I've just moved this log here and we'll see if they like this higher vantage point to land on. See how we go. Okay, the male's coming. The male's just down to my left. Come on, buddy. This is where you pray to the birding gods that uh, the bird will go where you want. <laughs> they perch, they drop to the ground, they feed and they pop back up. So what I'm hoping is as he's traveling and doing this, he lands on my perch or one of these perches. He's on the perch. He's on the perch. <laughs> He's on the perch. Oh, I can't believe it. He left. The eye tracking is working brilliantly. Oh, absolutely stunning. For full disclosure, I have actually put some mealworms on that log, hoping that the bird would see it, and that's exactly what happened. So the bird has come along, it's landed on there on its own, it's seen the mealworm, it's grabbed it. So I'm just fingers crossed that the bird comes back for another go. So going into video mode is quite easy on the R7. You just flick the switch. It remembers your, your manual video settings and away you go. Female here. <laughs> this is incredible. What stunning birds. Well, that worked a treat. <laughs> We've had the male and the female now on that perch, which is just awesome. Um, very, very happy. Okay, so all I'm doing is I know that these birds land on these fence posts periodically as they come through feeding. So all I'm gonna do is stand here and wait. If I go after them, they tend to move away. So my best strategy is just to stay where I am and hopefully they come to me. So I have to admit, with 1280 millimeters of focal length, it's really hard to find a bird that's quite close to you. I had the female down in front of me and I just simply couldn't find it. It's very difficult, especially with the monitor, it makes it even harder than using a viewfinder. Probably there he is. Oh, I've got nice light on this female. <laughs> that was good. It landed on the it landed on the old fence post. You can see how the eye tracking just picked it up. And you'll also notice that the box is actually quite a bit bigger um, in the R7 on the monitor, whereas on the R5 it's much, much smaller. So it's a real bonus on the crop body. The uh, autofocus window fills up the majority of the window, which is awesome. So that was cool. Got some good shots there. Still haven't landed on the perch I want, but I'm very happy. So I just heard some little zebra finches <laughs> in the grass and didn't get a very good shot. Such a cute little finch that we have here. 
the light now is just so beautiful. The background, we've got this, this dead, these dead weeds or whatever, they're just coming up like a orangey red color in our background with coupled with that bird. It's just making for some absolutely beautiful shots. Oh, oh, the male flame robin right there. Oh my God, colors, everything is just stunning. Oh, it's just crazy. Absolutely stunning. Absolutely stunning. Unbelievable. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Beautiful bird on this perch, got the shots. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Just very grateful to be here and just absolutely incredible. All right, it's time for me to leave these robins. I've spent a lot longer than I expected, but why not? They're just so beautiful. I've got heaps and heaps of photos, but the light's definitely getting low now. I can see some kangaroos over in the field over here. So let's go and see if we can't get a headshot of kangaroo or something like that, um, just to end the day. That would be great. So let's go and do that. So we've got a fairly big mob of kangaroos out here. Just see if we can't locate one. Eye tracking is really struggling. There we go. Whoa. So the light has pretty much disappeared, but I've got some silver crested cockatoos. Definitely losing the light fast now. <laughs> it's literally disappearing. Well, we've got a few shots of those cockatoos. Sun's well and truly gone. Okay, so the sun's gone down. I'm waiting for the moon to come up. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Um, I had a great afternoon. I hopefully got some really nice shots of those flame robins. I've got that one brown falcon at the end, a few sulfur crested cockatoos, but overall just a really enjoyable session. Uh, the 800 gave us all that extra reach, so the birds were quite big in the viewfinder. I did struggle to find them, um, mainly with the monitor. Trying to find them when they're up close with that much focal length is a drama and I missed a few shots. You know, I was using the 15 frames per second. Oh, and I did not hit the buffer once today. Didn't hit the buffer in 15 frames per second C-Raw, so not an issue. So as you saw with those flame robins, just managed to be in the right place at the right time and waited for them and they popped up. Um, sulfur crested cockatoos, just again, just looking for the right composition and, and what have you. So I'm definitely testing the R7 more and more. I'm getting used to where everything is and how it's working, which is to be expected as you use a camera more and more. Um, overall, an enjoyable day. So I often get asked what lenses people should be using with the R7, and this is possibly a, an option for you, you know, for a thousand US, I think it is. So two and a half thousand, around the same price as an R6, you can get this camera and this lens. So it's definitely an option. 800 is too much for a lot of things. You will need a zoom lens, like a 100 to 400. Um, this on its own would just be too much, especially when the birds come close with its minimum focusing distance and that crop factor. So it's just something to consider. But overall, I really enjoy Enjoyable session. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's session. If you've got more questions about the R7, leave them in the comments. I do read them and reply to them. Uh, thanks to all the new members that are supporting the channel. I appreciate that. The subscribers, of course. 
like if you like it, <laughs> lets YouTube know that my videos are worth watching. So thanks again, very grateful for all the support. Until the next one, take care and see you later.